Hey there guys, hope you're doing great. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I created this amazing mood in Unreal Engine using Ultra Dynamic Sky. Ultra Dynamic Sky is a powerful and easy to use tool that allows you to create dynamic and customizable skyboxes, weather effects, and lighting scenarios for your games and simulations. As you can see, the result is stunning and immersive and it really enhances the mood and tone of the scene. I'm going to walk you through the steps that I followed to set up the ultra dynamic sky, adjust the parameters and tweak the lighting settings to achieve this effect. By the end of this video, you will be able to create your own beautiful and realistic lighting using ultra dynamic sky in Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's get started. Now let's delete the existing Ultra Dynamic Sky Blueprint. And as you can see, I just have three point lights to kind of simulate the lantern light. And let's add a new Dynamic Sky Blueprint to our scene. And this is the default settings and lighting scenario that you're gonna have if you drag it to your scene. So I'm going to start with the cloud coverage and this parameter controls how much of the sky is covered by clouds. And since we want to have kind of a cloudy and hazy environment, I'm going to set it to something like three. The next one is fog and this parameter enables or disables the fog effect in the scene and it adds a layer of mist or haze that reduces the visibility and contrast of distant objects. And you can use fog to create different atmospheric effects such as morning, mist, smog, or foggy night. All right, let's continue. And these are the cloud related parameters that we're not going to be talking about them in this video until we reach to the simulation category. And with this longitude and latitude parameters, you can kind of adjust the time of the day. And since we want to have kind of a daylight in our scene, the amount for these two parameters would be okay on 41 and 18 and let's continue. And then we reach to the skylight and I'm going to be tweaking on the intensity, temperature, and also the color. And as their names indicates, these parameters control the color and temperature of the skylight and also the intensity of it, which is the ambient light that comes from the sky. And the skylight affects the overall tone and mood of the scene. And you can use the temperature slider to adjust the skylight from warm, I mean the orange to cool, which is blue, or use the color picker to choose any color you want. As you can see, as I move my mouse cursor on the color wheel, it affects the color tone of the skylight. So let's move on. And here we have the exposure tab and the exposure bias parameters for different weather conditions like cloudy, foggy, day or night are used to fine tune the lighting and visibility in your scene. And I'm going to be decrease these parameters since I have a daytime and cloudy and also a foggy mood in my scene. Next, we have the fog color. And this parameter controls how much the fog color is influenced by the skylight color. The higher the value, the more the fog will match the skylight color and the lower the value, the more the fog will have its own color, which you can set in the fog color parameter. Then we reach to the fog density tab and contribution parameter. These parameters control the density and contribution of the base fog, which is the fog that affects the whole scene uniformly. The higher the density, the thicker the fog. The higher the contribution, the more the fog will affect the lighting and shading of the scene. And I'm going to adjust the fog density contribution to 0.5, but you may have different lighting scenarios. So feel free to tweak on this parameter to reach the best result. And then we have the fog density daytime multiplier which is a parameter that allows you to adjust the density of the fog during daytime and it acts as a 
multiplier to base fog density, effectively increasing or decreasing the thickness. So I'm going to adjust the value to something like 0 0.8. But on the other side, we have the cloudy density contribution. And this parameter is designed to adjust the impact of cloud density on the fog within your scene. Essentially, it allows you to control how much the presence of clouds will contribute to the overall density of the fog during cloudy conditions. And the simple breakdown, when we want to say cloudy density, it refers to density of the clouds themselves, but the contribution is the extent to which the cloud density affects the foggy density. Now let's activate the use volumetric fog and this parameter controls the extinction of the volumetric fog, which is the fog that varies with height and distance and its impact is touchable. But beside it, I want to tweak on the volumetric fog extinction, which refers to how light interacts with the fog particles in the atmosphere. And I'm gonna increase it for dense fog mist or heavy atmospheric conditions. And after that, I'm going to check the render global volumetric material. And when this parameter is enabled, the global volumetric fog material affects the entire scene, including lighting, shadows, and atmospheric scattering. And I suggest you to enable it for cinematic scenes, outdoor environments, or when you want realistic fog and lighting interactions. And finally, this is the parameter that will do the magic, the dust. And the parameter controls the density or concentration of dust particles in the atmosphere. And increasing the amount makes the atmosphere hazier and more opaque. And high dust amounts are suitable for arid or desert environments, which is the thing that we are looking for it for this scene. And beside it, the dust color parameter determines the hue or tint of the atmospheric dust. Warm dust colors such as orange or brown create a sunset or desert-like ambience, while cooler dust colors such as blue or gray evoke misty or foggy conditions, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to set it to a cyan color and... That was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and the tips. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. And thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new today. Stay tuned for more videos and happy creating.